break, we showed you this new trend. It's called sunburn art, where sunscreen is only applied in certain patterns to create patterns. Experts say sunscreen should be used every day. And can you guess what sun protection factor is effective for most people? Is it SPF 8, SPF 30, or SPF 100? Audience, what do you think? 830, okay, or, or 100, okay? They're thinking 100 because they'll get 100%, right? That's what we think. Well, joining us with the answer, please welcome dermatologist Dr. Sherry Ingram. Hello there. Okay, so 830, or it makes sense. A lot of people would say 100 because I'm thinking I'm getting 100% blockage, but right. a difference between sunscreen and sunblock also. So anything above 30 gives you about a 95 plus percent coverage. When you get up to about 50, you get a 97, 98 percent, and 100, you get about 99 percent. So it's a very small incremental gain. So 30 or higher, the American Academy of Dermatology says is great. All right, good to know, because sometimes when the SPF factor goes higher, so does the price. This is true. So the only reason I tell people sometimes, if you want to buy 100, the only reason it would be beneficial is studies have shown people don't apply enough sunscreen mm. so if you're not putting a shot glass amount on which is about two tablespoons or 30 cc's which is one ounce if you're not getting an all that on and you're getting a hundred you're gonna get better coverage okay otherwise 30 is good. yeah before we get specific on some of the types of sunscreen sure. that we have just want to back up to uh, it, it seems like there's a conflict in the medical community about the whole idea of sun exposure I hear some doctors say no no, no you need it to produce vitamin mm -hmm. D so get some sun exposure just not too much so it leaves a lot of us saying well how much is enough how much is too much right the bottom line is you should not seek the Sun an average adult in Boston or New York gets enough vitamin D produced in their skin if they're still producing it which a lot of adults don't in two to five minutes you're not going to make any more after two to five minutes so there's no benefit in seeking the Sun you can actually do it dietarily you will get enough in your diet if you take vitamin D supplements eat vitamin D rich foods but we do know if you seek the Sun you will get skin cancer, so not worth yeah, it to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, but vitamin D is, is, a lack of vitamin D is easily fixable Absolutely through the supplement. with diet. Okay, because we know the idea here is to keep ourselves protected from UV rays, which as a dermatologist, you see often, even people with darker skin come in and say, kind of, what's that right there? Yeah, we were talking about it earlier. You know, people, Latin, African-American, darker skin types, they still get sunburns, mm -hmm. and they can still get skin cancer, and they still need to protect themselves just as much. Okay, sunscreen sprays versus some of the lotions. What are the advantages here? So the advantage of a spray is if you have children and you need to chase them down yeah. to put sunscreen <laughs> on them, which is I have to do all the time with my children, sprays are great. You want to spray them outdoors, that's better, and to apply on the face, spray them in your hands and apply them on the face. Mm -hmm. And you need to make sure you get a really good layer on. The good thing about creams and lotions is if you put a shot glass size amount against one ounce on the whole body, you're going to get a good thick layer. But if you're yeah, out you're on, almost rub, you're rubbing it in. Exactly. But if you're out on a boat, you're out by the pool, and you need to get it on there, use a spray. It's an easy thing to do. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to the question I was uh, uh, touching on earlier, sunscreen and sunblock. Right. So right now it's a lot of semantics. So the FDA went back and made a lot of rules in 2012 about how things have to be labeled. There's no more water you know, blocking. It's actually water resistant for a maximum of 80 minutes. There's no more waterproof. Sunscreen and sunblock, really the same thing. Okay. SPF is what you need to focus on. All right. So there are some items with multifunctional uh, purposes here. So some multi multifunctional lotions with SPF in them. Right. So these are the anti-helios products. These are some of the greatest products out there. You can get these at drugstores, grocery stores, and these are neat. These are kind of double duty. You can get antioxidants in them. You can block DNA damage as well as block sun rays. You can also buy BB and CC creams where you get a little color, you get sunscreen. From my standpoint, whatever makes you buy it and put it on your skin and you like it and you're gonna use it and it says SPF 30 or higher, go for it. Okay, so you have a group here that you're kind of fond of. The right, good thing is that right. uh, these are things that don't require you know, a dermatologist um, you know, prescription. Exactly, exactly. You can get these sometimes at a Walgreens, CVS drugstore, sometimes at a doctor's office. These are products that are tried and true and tested and actually what I recommend to patients, SPF 30 or higher and zinc containing because 
zinc, micronized zinc. You know, we used to have zinc oxide. White right, bra. right, right. No one wants yeah, to go The lifeguards had it like right on their noses exactly. and stuff like that. Paint. Well, now they have micronized zinc, transparent zinc, which really reflects the rays. Those are physical sunscreens, and those are great. But you can also get some of the chemical sunscreens, which actually absorb some of the rays, as long as it is UVA and UVB broad spectrum. Okay. So we know there's different ways to, to address the whole idea of skin cancer and sunburns. One, of course, is prevention. But we're hearing more about, uh, like, the HelioCare supplement that can gradually yes. build up the body's defense yes. to the UV rays. This is one of my favorite products. It's actually been around for about 10 years, but now it's gaining some more ground. You can buy it in, you know, certain drugstores, your dermatologist's office. What it is, it's a Honduran fern leaf extract called Polypodium leucotomos. It gives your body its own endogenous UPF protection. So let's say you put on your sunscreen, you're on a boat, you sweat it off. If you are taking this pill, you are getting some built-in protection. You forget to apply it to your ears, but you apply it everywhere else. You are getting some built-in protection. So it's an extra layer of protection. I tell patients, if you play tennis every day, take one every morning. If you're going to be in the sun all day that day, yeah. take a second one at noon. But it has anti-aging benefit as well. Yeah. And I love the sun protective clothing, you know, especially oh, with little yeah. kids. They can play outside Huge. swim with Huge. those like sun protective clothing bathing Huge. suits. Yeah. The, if you can get your kids to wear a, a sun shirt, a yeah. cute sun shirt, or even adults. I always go to Athleta and buy my own sun shirts. It is so easy because you're not going to sweat off and rub off that sunscreen. We tell patients, reapply your sunscreen every two hours. Reapply it when you get wet. And if you don't have to keep reapplying it to your arms because you have a shirt on, how great is that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then in terms of how to apply, as you how said earlier, it's sunscreen. just making sure that you get it rubbed in correctly. Yeah, you want to put a really good layer on. I'm going to have Kate show you how to do this now. So you want to think of this little shot glass full. That's your goal to get right, on your right. whole body. And so Kate's actually going to show us how to put it on. So what you want to do, start head down. She already has it on her face. And then do a really good and, coating. And speaking of her face, she also has uh, makeup on. Some makeups come with the SPF factor Huge. built and in. And I tell patients, if you can get an SPF, you know, BB or CC cream with tint and then put a sunscreen powder on top, extra protection. Yeah. Okay, so she's getting the rub down, mm -hmm. not missing any spots. Don't be afraid to ask someone to help you put it on in other Huge. areas, especially exactly. if they're good looking. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So <laughs> while she's doing that, we have an email question from Melissa. And she says, I recently went fishing and applied sunscreen all over my body, but for some reason, my legs were the only parts that really burned. Could my legs have been sun poisoned? I get burned much quicker on my back no matter right. what I do, but that's where I suffered a really severe burn uh, years ago. I mean, there's a couple of reasons this can happen. Number one, if her sunscreen was old. So sunscreen is made by the FDA mandate. It needs to last for three years. So if you use old sunscreen where the product's broken down, it's not as stable. Also, if there's an expiration date on the sunscreen, throw it away after that expiration date. So that's important. The other thing is sometimes an individual will be on photosensitizing medication. So mm. she was on a medicine that made her legs more sensitive. That could happen, but also, Areas like your back and maybe her legs hadn't been getting as much sun right. over the summer, over the year as her arms did. So, so they were break it extra in. vulnerable. You need to break it in. So maybe put an extra thick layer on places that haven't gotten very much yeah. sun. Yeah, and interesting you talked about the medication. Some birth control pills can cause that Absolutely. issue as well. Absolutely. All right, well you're ready for the sun for That's about right. five minutes yes. now. Right. Yes, Thank yes, you very yes. much.